Hi, I'm Alex. This is Books and Paperbacks, and welcome to my year in books. I'll be going over all of my stats and filling out a bookish survey telling you about everything I read in 2023. Let's get started. Hello from my computer. I'm going to film this here. I think it'll just be easier so I can screen share. I'm going to start off with a survey and I also have my story graph wrapped up so I'll be going over that as I go through the survey. The link will be down below to the survey. This was created by Jamie over at the blog The Perpetual Page Turner. I'll have the link down below. I've been following her for a while and using this survey a lot. First question is number of books you read and I ended up reading 80 last year. I read 90 in 2022 so I actually had 10 less books this year. I have mentioned this. I got really sick this year. I have been dealing with chronic sinus infections my whole entire life and 2024 they decided to make a return and so I have been dealing with that and that is why I have not been reading that much. I think there was a couple months that I only read like one or two books so that's exactly why. Number of rereads are two. I reread Heartstopper volume three I believe it was and the graphic novel Bloom. Now I can actually go over to the story graph because I need to know what genre I've read most from. As always you can check my description if you want to follow me on the story graph. Let's go. My first book was Kiss and Tell by Deep Karam and my last book was It's a Fabulous Life by Kelly Farmer which I will be reviewing in my end of the year recent reads video. Some of my stats are wrong in the story graph so my actual stats are here on my reading tracker which was created by Allie at the Hardback Hoarder. I'll have her Etsy shop down below if you're interested in any of the reading trackers. I love this and I have been able to make it my own. I love it a lot so I I actually ended up reading 12,801 pages and I listened to 302 hours of audiobooks. I read 24 audiobooks in 2023. It was definitely the audiobook year for me. You enjoyed some lighthearted fun rode a roller coaster of emotions and burst into fits of laughter and most stories developed at a steady pace. I would say that's pretty true. Here is my little stats of her month. August was definitely my best month because I participated in the amazing readathon. I don't really do goals anymore but I've been doing goals since last year of what year it is. So last year's goal was to read 23 books. The genres I spent the most time with were LGBT coming in at 40. LGBT is not our genre, it's a subject. I read 38 romance, 36 young adult, 25 contemporary, and 16 graphic novels. And honestly, that is probably because I read some of the GLAAD awards. I just never got around to posting the video because I didn't really finish it. So I don't really know what I'm doing with that video. I think I'm just done with it. The longest book I read was 13 Hours and that is The Brothers Hawthorne by Jennifer Lynn Barnes which I read for the Goodreads Choice Awards where I read Young Adult Finalists in the Goodreads Choice Awards for a video collaboration. I'll have that link down below for you. I don't want to have to read the series ever again. I am not a fan of it. My shortest book was 32 Pages We Are Grateful by Tracy Sorrell. I really enjoyed that. The average length of books you read was 275 pages and it took you around 10 days to finish a book. I think that that is pretty realistic. I can agree with that. Well, um, <laughs> it took me 318 days to read Mexican Gothic, which honestly isn't that true, but it's because I had started it like a year prior and that's just what it said. But I did read it, I think in like one or two days. That was also a read for the Amazing Readathon. Authors I spend the most time with were unfortunately Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Also unfortunately, uh, these two authors I read for the Goodreads Choice Awards. This year I did, at the beginning of the year, there was a video collab I did with a bunch of other booktubers where we read the last 10 years of winners. Mine was Young Adult Fiction and I had to read all of the Hawthorne series for that. I read the first three books and then at the end of the year we came back and we did the 2023 awards and I finished out the series and I'm still not a fan of it. Uh, then I had to read Karen and McManus for the end of the year for the Goodreads Choice Awards and Nicole Mellaby I read three books from. I read Camp Quilt Bag which was her collaboration with AJ Sass and then her series came out this year called The House on Sunrise Lagoon and I read both of those. 
I probably have answered some of the questions here. The first question in the best of books category is what is the best book you read in 2023? When you're watching this, I have already posted my top 10 books, so I'll have that video linked down below for you. It is Promise Boys by Nick Brooks. I think this was one of the best YA books of 2023. Book you were excited about and thought you were going to love more but didn't? Um, that's a tough one. I might have to go through what books I actually read in 2023 because I didn't have too many that I hated. Oh, you know what? I did read Chef's Kiss by Jarrett Melendez, which was for the Glad Awards, and I just thought it was fine. I was not that big of a fan of it, and it definitely let me down. I think it was the romance aspect. I also just hated the miscommunication, but I thought it was fun besides all of that. I'll also say Galaxy the Prettiest Star, which I also read for the Glad Awards. I just didn't like a trans representation in that personally. Most surprising was Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. I really like her YA. I have never read her before, but I've really enjoyed this. I also read it for the Goodreads Choice Awards and I was really impressed. I really enjoyed it. Book you pushed the most people to read this year and they did. I think it was Nicole Mellaby because I put out a community tab post a couple months ago asking what book have I influenced you to read. I would love to know in the comments if you didn't respond to that what book I have influenced you to read especially in 2023 but I did get some good responses that I was really surprised about especially some from my book calls. I was really blown away by that and I asked that because of the current SMP boycott going on and I wanted to just see how much influence I actually have and I was really surprised. So I would definitely say Nicole Mellaby which is awesome because I always get sent her books and I would also say I talked a lot about the Charm Offensive. I don't know if anybody picked that one up but I would definitely say Nicole Mellaby is probably the biggest one that I've pushed so far. Best series you started in 2023. Best sequel ender of 2023. I don't really read series and I did read some series this year and I will say the last book in the One of Us is Lying series was actually really good. It's not my favorite. I still had problems with it. I did start the Davenports which is going to be a duology and I really enjoyed that but I don't really read that many series. I'm more of a standalone person. Favorite new author? Wait till you hear how many new authors I have had this year. This actually might give me my series question too. I guess Heartstopper is a series so yeah that was a good one. Okay you explored 62 new authors. That's nuts. I DNF'd 10 books this year. I read 10 books from my own shelves. I don't know how true that is because the actual number is on my spreadsheet which says I read 10% which isn't great. So technically I read 13 of my own. I read 39 books from the library. I just use my library so much. You could also say Libro FM is owned um, but my physically owned I didn't read that much. Uh, this is not that realistic because it's not all of the books that I own. I probably own like 200 or more. I didn't do that well with reading books from my own shelf and that's definitely another priority for 2024 because I just want to do a big unhaul of things because I have so many books over the years. This will be my 10th year on booktube and I have so many books that I just do not read. Like I said I use my library so much that if I really need it I'll just use my library. Best book from a genre you don't typically read or was out of your comfort zone. I have picked up some fantasy this year but it's very light fantasy. I really got into historical fiction. I also picked up some mystery which I do like that genre. I just don't pick it up that much. I started reading cozy mysteries which was really fun but besides that that was all. I still kept to my contemporaries. <laughs> Most action-packed thrilling unput downable book of the year. I read the Miles Morales book by Jason Reynolds for a reading vlog where I read books based on my favorite movies. I'll have that link down below because it should be out already but I really enjoyed that. It was really action-packed. Magical Boy was as well but Unput Downable book. Day Tonight Tomorrow was fantastic. Fantastic. I really enjoyed that. I was glued to that one for sure. Book you read in 2023 that you most likely will be rereading next year. Uh, I'm not really sure about that. 
but I was thinking I might reread a book that I've read in 2022, which was Rosalind Palmer Takes the Cake. I really loved that one. I don't really reread that much unless it's for a video. Oh, but I will be rereading a book for my 10th anniversary on booktube, so maybe I will have some rereads this year. Favorite cover? I feel like I read some pretty cool covers this year. Junior High was great. I thought that was a good cover. It wasn't my favorite book, but I thought the cover was cool. Most memorable character of 2023 definitely was Jojo McCoons. I really enjoyed her. This is a middle grade series by Dawn Quigley and I thought Jojo was so cute. I also really enjoyed Kit Webb. I thought he was fun as well as Dave and Charlie from the Charm Offensive. There was definitely some memorable characters this year. And Perry from Warrior Girl on Earth. Most beautifully written book in 2023. Oh, that's tough. Dear Haiti Love Elaine was fantastic. I thought that was good. Mexican Gothic as well. Most thought-provoking and life-changing book of 2023. I want to say amateur, but also Punch Me Up to the Gods. Those were both books I read for a video where I read Elliot Page's book recommendations, and those two definitely made me think differently. And I loved amateur. It really spoke to me on another level as a trans man. It was from a trans man talking to trans men pretty much. Oh, I loved it so much. That would definitely be one that I would also reread. Book you can't believe you waited till 2023 to finally read. Mexican Gothic. I hate myself for that. <laughs> I hate myself for it. What else? The Charm Offensive is another one that I was like, oh my god, I've had this book sitting in my room. Why did it take the Amazing Readathon to read it? But I'm glad that it did because I'm glad I got a chance to pick it up. I'll also say Kiss and Tell by Deep Karam. I no, I have been sleeping on that author, especially Kat Sebastian. I've also been sleeping on her. It was definitely a year of me picking up books that I should have already picked up. Also, Rachel Lynn Solomon. I can't believe I never read anything by her. I really loved her YA. It was so good. It just brought me back to like 2014 when I started reading again and reading contemporary. It was really fun. Book that shocked you the most? Can I just say Mexican Gothic? I was so surprised by that book. It was so good. Uh, Finna by Nino Cipri was really fun. I don't know. I don't think I had like many shocking books. I was really surprised that I really enjoyed Talia Hibbert's YA. I had DNF'd it in February because I was just not having a good time mentally. I already told you the whole spiel of everything that happened to me, but I just was not in the mood and I DNF'd it because I just wasn't feeling it. And I'm so glad that I reread it in December because it was so good. Another book is Five Survive by Holly Jackson. I read this for the Goodreads Choice Awards for the 2023 finalists and I loved it. It was so good and I'll definitely pick up more of her work. I'm definitely going to try and pick up Good Girl's Guide to Murder in 2024 because I was really surprised by that one. Favorite book you read in 2023 from an author you read previously? Caroline's Heart by Austin Chant or S.A. Chant. Caroline's Heart by S.A. Chant. I can't believe I didn't pick this up sooner because it's amazing. It is a T for T romance novella following a trans man and a trans woman, Cicely. Her past lover, Caroline, had died and she kept her heart. This is a T for T romance novella following a trans woman and a trans man. Trans man is in a saloon, so this is a western. He's in a saloon, he gets shot, he meets Cicely, who is a trans woman, and her past lover, Caroline, had died, but Cicely kept her heart and she ends up giving it to the trans man. And it is just so romantic. It's fucking beautiful. I love it. I'll also say Adiba Jagadar. I really enjoyed her book, The Do's and Do Nots of Love. I also enjoyed Throwback by Maureen Gu, who I have read from before. 2023 debut you read. Oh, I did read a 2023 debut. However, I cannot mention it here because I am supporting the SMP boycott. This is a marketing boycott targeted at promotion. You can still buy the author's works and read them, but I will not be reviewing or mentioning any of those titles until they meet our demands. It has been three months and we have not gotten a proper letter or response. 
detailing everything and meeting our demands. I'll have a link down below if you want to know more about the boycott, but unfortunately I can't mention it. So St. Martin's Press, maybe you could actually say something about the boycott and actually meet all of our demands and address them. This boycott is to help ensure that influencers and authors of color have the marketing resources and that they are safe and protected in this company. Until then, I will not be mentioning any of their books. So can't tell you about that one. Best world building, most vivid setting you read this year? I'll definitely say Throwback by Maureen Goo had that. This was actually a Back to the Future retelling and I really enjoyed that one. Finna was also pretty vivid. It's kind of like an Ikea setting. Book that put a smile on your face or was the most fun to read? Magical Boy was so fun. I really thoroughly enjoyed that. It was just so fun to see a trans superhero. Like the trans and queer kids are getting the best literature right now and fiction. I am so jealous. Even though I do get to read them, I'm just like, why did I have to wait this long? I love it so much. Magical Boy is so fun. It definitely will heal your inner child if you're a trans person as well. I just thought this was so great. Oh my god, it was amazing. It was like turning red but for trans people. Oh my god. It was trans mask and I loved it so much. Book that made you cry or nearly cry? Hmm. Maybe amateur, honestly, just because it was hitting me in the feels that I needed. Uh, but I don't think there, there was any book that actually made me cry. I can't remember. I feel like I would remember. Maybe that's actually good or maybe it's not. <laughs> I don't know. Hidden gem of the year. Oh, what did I just say was hidden gem? Oh no, that was this year, 2024, so I can't say that one. Donuts and Doom, I thought that that was interesting. It was a fantasy graphic novel, I guess. It was about these witches and I thought that was really fun. Oh, Everyone Hates Kelsey Miller was also a different one that I had never heard of before and I really enjoyed that one. Book That Crushed Your Soul. Uh, I don't really think I have one, honestly. I didn't read too many books that made me cry or do I even remember about? Uh, most unique book you read? I would say The Davenports was interesting too because it's a historical romance set in 1910 and it's following a black family who are successful and wealthy because of their carriage company and I really enjoyed that one. Oh, I also read It's a Fabulous Life by Kelly Farmer and that was unique because it was a sapphic retelling of It's a Wonderful Life. I really enjoyed it. It was just fun for the vibes. I don't really have too much to say about it besides I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. It's just set in a small town. It's sapphic and it's about a girl like learning to appreciate what she has and what she does for people. Very much like it's a wonderful life but it was really fun. Book that made you the most mad. What do you think it is? What do you think it is? Is it the Hawthorne series? Because it absolutely is. Um, I think there was another one that really made me mad though. Oh, For the Writer I Hate You also annoyed me because it was very toxic romance that does not need to exist. It just doesn't. Okay, and then we're just to like the goals and things like that. Favorite video you made in 2023. I loved my Elliot Page video. And let me go through my channel really quickly. I had a goal to do more weekly reading vlogs, which I did do. I enjoyed doing that. I liked my trope taste test that I started, which will be resuming in 2024. I just haven't gotten the time to actually sit down and do it. My Elliot Page video I enjoyed. This was really fun too, reading the most popular book from the day I was born. I really enjoyed that one. Uh, my Goodreads video was really fun. I enjoyed that. I really didn't make too many videos this year. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, I only made 23 videos. That's not a lot at all, but I just had a lot of things going on and I'm proud of the stuff that I did make. My booktuber behind the scenes video was also fun. I've been wanting to do some content related vlogs, so I'm glad I did that one. It was just a realistic day in my life. I showed you what I do on my content day, which is Saturdays. 
best moment in your bookish or creator life. I got my first sponsorship this year. I was so happy. I had been wanting this for a very long time. I had it on my little creator list of things that I wanted to accomplish. I did not hit 3,000 subscribers. I did not hit monetization, but I got a sponsorship and that was really exciting. I had a video sponsored by Bookshop, which I love. I love Bookshop, so I'm really glad that they took a chance on me. So thank you, Bookshop. I'm so glad that you decided to work with me because I was really happy about that. I had a lot of fun. Most challenging thing about content creation, which honestly was just my life. I didn't read that much. I work as a freelancer, so I was working a lot. So I kind of just work more than I do content creation. I would love to be a full-time booktuber someday, but I don't really think that that is in the cards for me, unfortunately, but I do like my job, so that's at least good. Now to the 2024 questions. One book that you didn't get to in 2023, but will be your number one priority. I hate myself for this. This is my accountability. Alex, you and me, we need to be reading Raquel Murray. I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but it just did. What's wrong? I need to just pick up her book and be done with it, okay? I need to read all of her books and be done with it. I just have to. I hate that every year I'm like, oh, I'm gonna read her book. No, just pick it up. Just do it. Stop fooling around. Stop. Book that you are anticipating for 2024, the new Alison Cochran. Here we go again. It's a road trip book and OK Cupid by Mason Deaver. I also made a whole video, which I'll link up above, of me sharing 2024 queer releases. Go and check it out. One thing that you hope to accomplish or do in your bookish content creation life, please let's get me to 3k, y'all. Send my channel to your friends and family. Anybody, get your boy to 3k, okay? I'm so close and I believe that YouTube keeps unsubscribing people and it's so annoying. I also want to make more themed reading vlogs. I have so many ideas that I am working on behind the scenes. Also, like I said, I'll be continuing my trope taste test. So I'll link that video down below if you don't know what it is. It is me trying new tropes that I don't know about. Basically, I decided, hey, I don't really know what my favorite tropes are besides the generic ones, fake dating, enemies to lovers, rivals to lovers, but I don't really know about the rest of them. So I'm basically doing like that YouTuber taste test, how people do that. But with me, it's tropes of like, what do I actually like? Is it going to be something that I continue to read or not? So going to definitely continue that, the reading vlogs. I'm also going to just stick with recent reads. I think that's so much easier for me because I don't really read a fast pace unless it's for the amazing readathon apparently. So yeah, I think I'm just going to continue doing recent reads. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to drop a like if you enjoyed this. It really helps out my channel when you do so. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Alex. Thanks for stopping by. If you enjoy queer and trans books and you want to get more of my content, feel free to hit subscribe. It's free and I'm trying to hit 3k. So let's get me to the road to 3k. This is my 10th year on booktube. So this May I'll be having some video concepts coming out. It's probably just gonna be one video but I'm very excited. I can't believe I've actually stuck to something this long. Like I honestly can't believe I've been on booktube for almost 10 years and if you've been here since the beginning, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyway, that is it for this video. Thank you again for watching and all of your support in 2023. I cannot wait for you to see the rest of my reading vlogs. I have so many concepts. I hope that I can get them out for you. Follow me on Instagram if you want more bookish content. And as always, check my description for resources, specifically for the SMP boycott and to help end the Israeli occupation in Palestine. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.